more the merrier. Uh, we are coming to our last category of questions here, uh, which is future of the force. Uh, question one, sir, how have current affairs, particularly the war in Ukraine, altered or heightened our role in securing national defense? I, um, just a couple, boy, this is another question I can go in a, a lot of different directions. And what, what I'd actually like to do is, I, I may strip off the Ukraine part um, for the time being, I'll, and I'll kind of come back to that. What General Brown is, is looking at right now, and, and Ukraine is a piece of it, but I think also some of the other challenges that are being presented by you know, peer competitors uh, around the world uh, are, are highlighting to us that you know the force that we have right now, which is in the shape of it and the construct of it, the makeup of it, whether it be the equipment that we have or the people and well, the, the Air Force specialty codes and the career fields that we have, are those the ones that we're going to need going into the future? You know, especially um, when you look at the importance, I'll pick on cyber because it's an easy one. You know, do we have the right amount of cyber talent in the Air Force? When we look at the, the contested environment that is, you know, uh, cyberspace, um, are we training airmen to do missions that are at the front edge, the leading edge of cyber warfare? Are we putting enough airmen you know, at that. Do we need some of the, the career fields and skill sets that, that I grew up with? Or, you know, are they a carryover of conflicts past? So the chief is really driving us towards thinking, you know, what does our future force look like? So maybe a little bit less towards towards Ukraine, but there are, um, and, and more towards other, you know, peer competitors of a, of a global nature to figure out, okay, what are those, you know, what are those things look like, you know, Manned aircraft, unmanned aircraft, autonomous aircraft. What does a fighter squadron of the future look like? It is not, you know, 18 F-16 sitting on the ramp at Kunsan, perhaps. It is a, is it perhaps a mix of manned aircraft, you know, six gen NGAD and, you know, collaborative combat aircraft. And then what are the skill sets of the, the, the human beings that needed to, to support and, and enable that? Uh, but I will go back to Ukraine because I do think that there's a lot of value there um, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, has allowed us to, um, I think, be successful in the support of the Ukraine effort is, you know, we, we've got some pretty um, uh, incredible airmen that have uh, done some outside the box thinking. You know, and I'll leave it at that for the purpose of, of this venue, but innovation. Identifying those airmen that have the capability to think outside the box, and they are at all ranks. Um, I would say a lot of them are at the very younger ranks. You know, how do we identify those people? How do we take care of them? And then how to, you know, whether it's uh, through their own experiences, through their own performance, or whether it's through skills or schools or training that we send them to, how do we continue to keep them on a path that allows them to innovate and find new and adaptive solutions to deal with things that maybe we haven't thought about? That it's something that the chief has really pushed uh, onto A1 to figure out how we identify and then retain that talent. Sir, innovation may be just the perfect segue to our final question of this podcast interview, which is what will the Department of the Air Force look like in 20 years? A great question. And it's what we're trying to get at. Uh, the, the next major senior leader conference that we have, it's, it's called the Corona Conference. It's been called that since uh, 1955. But uh, General Brown will host another one in, um, at USAFA in Colorado. And, the, and really the gist of it, and, and to give you the thumbnail sketch, is we're going to take a look at what the national defense strategy says. We're going to take that and you know how that drives the joint warfighting concept how that in turn drives an Air Force future operating concept that the A-5 has developed. And then down to the question of what does, what does the Air, United States Air Force need to look like in 2030, in 2035? Uh, and to points I uh, made poorly earlier, what do our squadrons look like? You know, what is our fighting force? Uh, what is our mix of you know, manned and autonomous uh, aircraft. What are the skill sets we need? It's again a long way of saying we're we're trying to get to those answers right now. We're not going to you know uh, develop those answers in a week long meeting in Colorado in, in October. 
but it's where the chief is driving us uh, in a, as a staff and, and there's a lot of great thought and effort going on. Do I, do I see like, you know, at, at, at the end of it, there's a PowerPoint slideshow presentation with this is the answer? No, I don't. What I do see is, you know, the, the staff and the team will come up with a series of choices, you know, as, as the situation, the strategic situation in front of us changes, we're going to be faced with a, um, a series of, of options, of dilemmas, if you will, but at least to have an understanding of what that roadmap looks like and then what are the, uh, what are the second and third order effects of, of uh, four structured choices that we're going to have to make. To be able to have that available, I think is going to be be helpful. And, and again, we'll continue to flesh that out uh, in the in the weeks and, and months to follow. Again, I realize probably not a satis completely satisfying answer, other than to say it is a it is a, a high interest uh, item for General Brown. Absolutely, and frankly, sir, uh, there that could be a separate podcast uh, yeah. questionnaire <laughs> altogether. Yeah, it's just always nice to know and be affirmed that the United States Air Force Department of the Air Force is leading the way in thought and innovation with so much uncertainty and insecurity around the world. Uh, so we appreciate your response to that. Yeah, and, I, and Tyler, for one more, I can kind of parenthetical at the end. And you know, I think the, the CGOs are, again, CGOs today is much smarter than, than Captain Schneider was back in the uh, uh back in the day, but I mean, when you look at the, the potential for conflict or for challenges around the world, you know, and especially if you're looking at peer, near peer competitors, just take a look at the forces that you would need uh, in a Pacific type of environment, air, space, maritime. If you look at a, maybe perhaps a, a European uh, type of scenario, air, space, land, you cannot do anything really without air and space. Um, so you know, I think the Air Force is at the forefront, you know, trying to figure out what is what is the force the nation needs. And regardless of the conflict, and this has played out in history and uh, near history and in, in, in further history, you know, air superiority and, and the ability of, of airmen to do their jobs uh, is really the key, key factor for, for success. I think that's right. And, and sir, I just want to state for the record, we're not any smarter than what Captain Schneider was back then. I think there's a whole host of information and data that's just coming to us in 2022 and beyond, and the data points are overwhelming. Growing up in Texas in the 80s, uh, we had one news channel. Uh, we had the Walter Conkites of the world uh, feeding us the news. Right. And uh, today we have just so many sources of information. It's almost a bit overwhelming. So we, we appreciate your time. Uh, we appreciate the fireside chat and, and really giving our tens of thousands of CGOs and listeners an opportunity to really better understand the Department of the Air Force, your thoughts, guidance as a three star lieutenant general, as a leader for us, uh, someone who we aspire to have. Um, for those who are listening in, I encourage you to read the entirety of General Schneider's lengthy bio um, that is not only impressive, it really gives us a way forward and something to look forward to in our careers uh, as we move out of our CGO roles um, in the coming years. This podcast uh, was supported by uh, Lieutenant Colonel Nathan Nark Paget. Um, the executive officer to General Schneider, and also Captain Chris Slack Carter, the chairman of the Air Force Company Grade Officer Council. Lieutenant General Schneider, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I appreciated it as well. Thanks, thanks very much for for the opportunity. And again, I, I not to correct you on anything. I, my interactions with with CGOs over the last couple of years have been thoroughly impressed by the the level of knowledge and understanding, um, and I think that it just it is a far more aware force today than the, than the one that I was growing up in. The, the challenges are different, uh, granted, but I, I was always impressed and always really uh, energized when I was, got a chance to maybe to leave the headquarters, get down into an actual unit, and see people doing the 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 job. You know, whether it's the the young enlisted or the uh, Listed of all ranks, uh, officers of all ranks, but certainly the the the, uh, the the younger officers and younger enlisted with the energy and the and, and the drive that they brought was always uh, an energy gainer for me. So thanks for what you do. Thank you, sir. We really appreciate it.